What's up guys, this is AP3 coming at you with another comic book review! But we're doing it near mint condition style. Which they do it better and subscribe to their channel. Just, you know, ev everything, uh, collected editions, you know, comics, manga, awesome channel. Anyways, okay, we will be talking about, for this video, the comic that made me the comic fan that I am today. Which you are looking at it already. Kick ass! Scripts by Mark Miller, with art by John Romita Jr., um, Tom Palmer, and Dean White. You might be thinking, um, when did Marvel, Miller World, or Image did an omnibus? I'll tell you that right now. Yes, Marvel, Miller World, and Image never released an omnibus edition of Kick-Ass. This is a custom-bound copy of Kick-Ass that includes everything from the original Dave Lizuski years. The stuff that I use for this is the original Marvel hardcovers and uh, one trade paperback. Let's just look at the book first. You can see here, just the cover for issue 6, as you can see. And it has uh, Big Daddy, Mindy, Dave, and... What's his name? Um, Red Mist. That is from uh, the first volume. Let's look at the spine. There's a... Uh, Kick-Ass and... Um, see. I don't want to spoil. Kick-Ass, Omnibus, Mark Miller, John Romita Jr., Miller World. And here's the back. This is from issue... This is from Kick-Ass 3. I just forgot which issue it was. Because I censored it. Yeah, this is a custom-bound copy. That is made of the trade paperbacks. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, hard covers and one trade paperback. This was bound by Blessings. Blessings book bindery and other printing services. I'll put the link in the description below so that you can see what I'm talking about. They did it so immaculately. Yeah, the layout was done by me. I just sent them the layout for the book. And then they just and then I shipped them the pages and they just bound it, printed this beautiful finish and just ah uh, Okay, now let's talk about the stories, the volumes inside this comic. Alright, okay, now I uh, changed up the uh, format and how I said. Anyways, kick ass. When did, how did this came about? I think if you've seen, oh yeah, that's a remark I did. Just so you know, I won't be selling this thing. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this, if you've seen the movie, the first two movies, first one was excellent, second one... It had fun moments, but if you've seen the first one, yeah, you, you get it. Teenage kid, basically Peter Parker, no superpowers, comic book nerd, decides to put on a costume. But that's just the, but, eh, I mean, but, but that's just, the, oh my god, I can't talk. <laughs> yeah, but that's just the uh, simple premise, but if you've actually read this, Oh my goodness, or you watch the movie. Oh my goodness, some dark stuff in this. It's a bit, the comic will always be darker than the movie. The movie's a bit funner to watch, to be honest. But this one is just nasty. And I don't even know how I got away with reading it. <laughs> At like age 11, I believe. <laughs> okay, that's, not, that's, you know, enough about my history with this comic. Let's talk about the comic. Oh yeah, this is, uh, this is from a volume on the introduction. I kept it just because by uh, Rob Liefeld of all people there's issue one and yeah this opening yeah if you've seen the movie you know this opening the only difference is after this these three pages yeah this is the next page Dave Lazuski getting his balls electrocuted yeah that's when you know that this comic is gonna be dark and just nasty and edgy. I happen to love edgy 
comics. I this as I said, this was the comic that got me to comics. Okay, <laughs> enough. Okay, let's just talk about the story. You see, they've seen the movie as I said, very basic. You you'll know the jizzers. Dave, high school student. You know this line right here was kind of always always stood out to me. Kick in my bedroom door and you would probably have found me downloading my favorite television show or jerking off to my biology teacher. Oh yeah, don't show this video to your kids because there's going to be a lot of pages and dialogue I might read out or point out that is not allowed for a younger audience. Don't let them be like me. <laughs> okay, then, yeah, I said pretty much the same as the movie. The only difference is... Dave is, you know, Dave is a bit more, is blonde, duh, and, you know, it's more, more of a, you know, he's still likable, but he's kind of an asshole, just like, you know, any work that's done by Mark Miller, as I said, I'm a sucker for that stuff, and you see uh, Dave here with his friends, we're comic book geeks, and yeah, this line right here, just, you know, as a Buffy fan, I'm a Buffy fan, I think that's a... Uh, Anyways, yeah, here's here's this line. Man, I still can't believe how good Whedon's X-Men is. This stuff makes Buffy look like shit. And I say that as world's numero uno Buffy maniac. <laughs> I'm more of a fake guy, Mark, Dave. Anyways, yeah, pretty much the same as the movie. These opening pages, these opening issues. The only difference is, as I said, the... Uh, Art just sucks you in, you know, John Mid Jr.'s artwork here is... Aside from All-Star Batman and Daredevil, this is one of my favorite work from... Look at that. Look at the action. It's pretty dynamic, but still, like, grounded. So you can see the stabbing here. It really makes the uh, page here. The uh, panel here pop. And, you know, the running over by a car scene, I think, is more... Engaging if you read it in a comic and you know him falling over oh, just gruesome stuff here and then issue two as I said the first few issues here is basically the same as the movie Because from what I remember correctly Mark Miller and um, Director writer Matthew Vaughn are In cahoots they're collaborating already when you know when um I think issues one to three were released at that point, and then Matthew Vaughn liked the first three issues so much to the point that you know he's like, I'm gonna make a movie out of this. Mark was like, Sure, why not? So yeah, and then I think the other issues weren't finished yet, so Matthew Vaughn just did whatever the, whatever he wants. Yeah, see, as I said, very similar to the movie. There's some differences here and there, as I said. The first three issues are one-to-one -one with the movie. There's not a lot of differences, just the actions, but more intense. See, so you can see the blood is more intense here. And this, David Lazuski. Yeah. yeah, this issue three. Yeah, I think this is where the differences stopped. Well kind of is the same. There's still some elements here and there, as I said. That's just straight out of the movie. Like this, these are uh, two pages. The gutter loss bothers me. I'll show you the binding later. This is just like the movie, as I said. The same. Okay. First few issues. Just the only difference is Mindy. Oh, wait. No, the Mindy stuff is the same. The Big Daddy stuff. Is the same right up until the. I'll just tell you later. Yeah, this stuff is just straight out of the movie. I think it was like issue four. Yeah, four issues, I mean, were out at the time. And then, you know, when issue five, I think, came out, I think issue five was, was you know, the scripting. I don't know. I don't know the story. I just heard it. There's some stuff that just ripped out of the. You know, the movie just, you know, just pulled from, and they executed beautifully. The only difference is Big Daddy's scary. Look at how massive. Yeah, John Romita Jr. draws this guy's massive. Especially if they're like trucker types. You know, Big Daddy here. Show you the uh, panel where it's, uh, 
I just it's not here. Yeah, here. I got a beard. He did the same thing with Jim Gordon. We gave him this big, bushy, scary beard, and I love that. You know, it makes him look, you know, grimier. You know, grimy. Big Daddy said, "Very big, hulking guy." You know, Mindy is awesome. No, only difference is yeah. No, there's no differences with Mindy in the movie. Only Big Daddy. Big Daddy's scary as hell in this comic compared to the movie. The movie is a bit softer. Let's just go with that. It's because Big Daddy is just scary. No, Dave is pissing his pants at that point. Yeah, there's that's where the the similarities end. And then there's the differences here, you know. Dave. Yeah, this book, this comic is grimy, as I said. This comic is what got me into comics. Made an impression on 12-year-old me. You know, this stuff right here. Yeah, this is the word. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking about the differences. I'm gonna talk about the comic, not compare it to the movie. Anyways. Yeah, this comic is just nasty. The story is, as usual for any Mark Miller comic, well told, well paced. But that's just me. Some of the lines here are kind of, you know, they, you, know, you can't get away with some of the lines of dialogue here, which I won't read for you. And, you know, some, some story decisions here you can't get away with nowadays. But I happen to love this stuff, you know, the, the darkness, the... You know, the dark humor reminded me of Angel. So, yeah. This is just, look at that. Look at the art. Oh! John Mead Jr. just knows how to draw battered faces. Look at that. Oh! Again. I can't JR, JR. Yeah, this is uh, volume one. As I said, this is where... This is what I, what got me to comics is volume one. It's an awesome read. Not for everyone, but the next volumes are not gonna resonate with you. I think the last one will resonate, but this one, I love. I love still. But, as I said, kick-ass, not for everyone. Oops, I'm ain't gonna show that page. Okay, now, that's the end for book one. Let's move on to book two. So, yeah, book two is Hit Girl. You might be thinking, why isn't it Kick-Ass 2? I thought it was Kick-Ass 2. Well, if you... But this is important. This is important to read because, you know, you see more character character stuff with, you know, Dave, Mindy, and Chris. You know, where, where are they now? You know, what are they doing? Also, that will lead into Kick-Ass 2. Which has more controversial scenes. This one doesn't have that much, to be honest. Because, you know, when I reread this, I was like, there's a lot of, like, super controversial scenes here. Just, you know, the character work for Mindy. I think Mark, in some places, Mark Miller seemed more invested in Mindy than writing Dave. It's kind of jarring. But, you know, I think that's just me. But, you know, he's still... He still nail, uh, nails uh, Dave. Obviously, this is his creation. Him and John Reed Jr.'s creation. But the Mindy stuff is just so engaging. You know, there's a follow-up Hit Girl series. I think it takes place like a few years. Let's say two years, three years after Kick-Ass 3. It's a fantastic read. It not only has Mark Miller writing. It also has, um, what's his name? Jeff Lemire. You know, of uh, Sweet Tooth. It is which I need to read. And, you know, I mostly know him as the guy who wrote the question back in DC Black Label. And, you know, the other story arc is written by both Rafael Albuquerque and Scavone. The guys who collaborated with Scott Snyder and All-Star Batman. Anyways, this is uh, where Chris is at. You know, he's... <laughs> There's a line here that's just hilarious. Okay, there's a... They're training. Dave is training with Mindy, obviously, because Mindy is this psycho assassin little girl. Little girl who's a psycho assassin. You know, they're just uh, doing some uh, undercover stuff here. Look at that. Boom, look at the taser stuff there. Bang. So, yeah, issue two. 
Mandy Lear teaching Dave how to crash over a window a la Angel or Batman or think of another character that doesn't work on this panel. <laughs> yeah, that's a... I think John Mitty Jr. was like, when he read that panel, it's like, Mindy throws a hammer. It's like, I know how to do that. Boom! I love this panel. <laughs> There's a Mindy. Oh, yeah, this is, um... Is, um... Her, um, family. Right now, you know. Spoiler alert. If you've seen the movie, Big Daddy's dead. The only difference in the movie, I forgot to mention this. Mindy's mom is alive which is just great i was like thank god thank god they didn't you know thank god they didn't do the same i was like thank god they didn't, they didn't. But yeah, anyways yeah mindy's mom was alive thank god and marcus you know um in the movie she he was big daddy's um what's his name partner ex-partner you know, big daddy and dad was an actual cop also in the movie, in Kick-Ass 2, he was played by uh, Principal Wood <laughs> from Buffy, which I was like, oh my god, you got Principal Wood, no way. So look at this line, I just noticed this right now. Big Bang Fury is on in two minutes, Mindy. Eat up that, eat up that ravioli. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of hard. Oh yeah, this is a plot point of the, the comic here. It was Mindy put some, um, I forgot what it's called, just something that will make you you know, she puts something in their uh, cocoa. That'll make them sleep even though that doesn't look like cocoa. It looks like water or Sprite. I don't know. There's another line that I absolutely love in this. Hit girl. You don't see Green Lantern having to do this shit. <laughs> Said, don't let your kids watch this video. Yeah, this is uh, it's a lot bigger than that. Boom! Dynamic action. Where's that? Um, there's that, uh, there's this line here, Mindy was, you know, teaching Dave. No, come on, run through your dialogue one more time. I want you to get that knuckle sandwich line nailed down. Spider-Man always kills it with that when he jumps through a window. And then, Dave jumps the window. Dave is like, did somebody order a fucking sandwich? What? And then Mindy's like, I said, knuckle sandwich, you dunce. Never mind, just stop hitting people. <laughs> Yeah, Mark Miller's humor is on point. I think his humor really... He really developed his uh, sense of humor in this volume. The jokes here are just so... Gen not genuine, but very natural. So I liked it. Again, that's just me. That's just me. I think not a lot will resonate. You know, this will not resonate with a lot of people, but as I say, this, this comic resonated more than that cover. This comic resonated with me. Here's another funny, funny gag. There's uh, Chris trying to kill a uh, Asian, I'm Asian, um, store owner. He blasts him with like a bazooka maybe. <laughs> and then after they do that, they started running, obviously. I'm gonna read out this line. Guys, what are you doing? You're supposed to be my henchman. Get back there and fight! No, we were fighting Asians, man. They're gonna be like Kung Fu experts or something. As I said, the humor here, not for everyone, but I happen to love it. <laughs> yeah, the writing, I think, really stepped up. I love the first one, don't get me wrong, but when I read this, I was like, oh my god, the humor! Spot. Oh, yeah, there's another plot point here. Mindy trying to blend in with the girls. That's uh, I love the character stuff here. Oh, yeah, Kick Ass 2 took some stuff from this comic but the comic did it better yeah Mindy is a very well rounded character well everyone is you know they got time to develop I'm not showing that page and then there's a uh, Mindy here I'm taking out some mobsters I believe I can't remember yeah this is lifted from the movie yeah this is some good good stuff here okay. um hit girl I recommend you read this oh ooh, yeah and then there's Mindy here, you know, talking to Big Daddy, wants to kill the other um, members of that mob. So, talking to Big oh wait, this is a she just wants to smash that guy's head. 
Yeah, there's a lot of boom. Yeah, that's so, yeah, this is ooh, yeah. That's it. Character stuff with Big Daddy here, Mindy. Awesome. You feel it. Yeah, this is a good book. That's it. Not for as I said, not for everyone, but it resonated with me. The characters really resonated with me. The storytelling here really. Oh, wait, there's a. This is where he trains across the world. I forgot if it's Japan, maybe. I can't find that page. I gotta look for it. That's hilarious. Hold on. Found it. I'm gonna read these uh, these pages. <laughs> but mostly this. You know, he uh, Red Mist training to be a uh, you know, you know to be like Bruce Wayne. I'm gonna read this uh, this entire page here. There's the first panel. I'm coming back home as the ultimate badass and waging war on everything you believe in, prick. Enjoy that DC relaunch while you can. Christopher, your task today is to retrieve the blue lotus from the top of the mountain. Fail and you will be charged a further $10,000. How long should I take to climb the mountain, sensei? 11 hours, my apprentice. I'll be back in 10. What's the significance of the blue lotus? No idea, I just saw it in Batman Begins. I thought it sounded cool. But the more we push him, the more Kashi seems to throw at us. <laughs> yeah, he's getting duped. <laughs> yeah, this is hilarious. Yeah, this is what happens if Bruce Wayne was a moron. I got these not. Okay, after all that, you know, he got scammed. Chris got home. Mindy decided to finally be a... No, not really that much of a superhero. She's just gonna train uh, Dave. No, Chris comes back home to, uh, no, he was in Eastern Europe here, and then he finally remembers who Kick-Ass is, what his real name is. It's Dave. Dave Lazuski. That's the end of book two. Now, let's move on to Kick-Ass 3. Okay, now let's talk about Kick-Ass 2, finally. This, um, volume is very controversial. That's it, not for everyone. Well, the first few issues, you know, it's not reaching into that edge lord territory yet, you know. It's just Dave getting trained by Mindy. The usual stuff. And, you know, Mindy being conflicted if she wants to be, you know, a normal girl. Kind of like Buffy. <laughs> but, you know, Mindy's a psychopath. And then also this volume has The Justice Forever, one of the most endearing characters in my opinion. You got a... What's in Dr. Gravity? You know, first guy Dave met here. And then, you know, there's a brawl. Yeah, this is like the movie. The movie just ripped this panel. Panel by panel. By panel. Also, not a thing that not a lot of people talk about. John Mita Jr. drawing running. I find that very, like, grounded looking and dynamic at the same time. So here's Dave, and there's Dave here again, Mindy's in a birthday party, Dave going down, you know, there's Dr. Gravity, uh, and then, boom, there's the Justice, forever. Very John Romita Jr., John Romita Jr. really got to flex his muscles here, look at that, the piping and battle guys, uh, top. These two look like they came out of four. This one looks like he came out of Punisher. Little uh, Colonel Stars here too. Lieutenant Stripes. Like I forgot I get get them confused because in the movie it's just Colonel Stars and Stripes. This guy, this there's two. They're like twin born again brothers. It's opening page. Show them. This is origin. The. Uh, Husband and wife um, superheroes here. Okay, let's talk about you know. Let's talk about how I feel about this comic. I love it. <laughs> Minus that one scene that I will not be showing the page because that is not. Ooh, it's a very rough subject for me to talk about. Which, if you read this, you'll know. But yeah, I love this. It had a lot of fun moments, but the story is very engaging too, and the character writing very engaging. As usual for Mark Miller. Yeah, this is the most unnecessary thing. It is exact. Like panels get bigger, and then they small again, and then this panels get bigger, and then 
Eisenhower, boom! Yeah, this is very unnecessary, and I don't care. It really sets the effect. It gets you. The effect is there. And then, unnecessary splash page here with the uh, kernel. Look at that. Oh! Yeah. This comic is off. Oops. It's on that page. And it shows that, you know, heroes can be good. They're not just dudes using their uh, position for power that comes into Kick Ass 3. This one, they're just doing it because they know what's good. And then there's some um, sprinkles here and there about the motherfucker who is just nasty. There's Mother Russia. Oh, decimating uh, Colonel and uh, Eisenhower. Oh, this is some dark stuff here. Yeah, this is uh, the motherfucker Red Miss. You know, building up his own Injustice League called the Toxic Megacons. I gotta read that. So yeah, here's uh, them teaming up, destroying Justice Forever side out, killing Colonel and oh yeah, this is some I'm sure that oh my god, that's a lot. Said not for everyone. Just me watching the news. Just pissed. This comic is just, let's say, not for everyone. The violence here is just nasty, nasty, nasty comic. At that point, it's just dark now. I'm that letter did this. Motherfucker just killing kids. Oh my god. Face it. Oh no, I ain't showing this. I ain't showing I'm skipping that part. This part's not for everyone. Even for me, who likes edgy comics? This is the super is getting detained because of the, uh, what happened to one of the, you know, because of the motherfucker, Red Miss, just destroying everything. He's just wrecking. You know, Dave's dad surrenders himself. This compelling character stuff, too. Let's see on this page here. And then Dave visiting his dad. And then afterward, oh, there's a uh, uh, motherfucker's secret headquarters. Yeah, this is just, this is the nastiest scene here. Rikers here. So, uh, Dave's dad. Okay. Seems normal. And then... Oh, yeah. The, the, oh, yeah. I'm gonna skip that. Yeah, this scene is just powerful as hell. Powerful, powerful, powerful parts there. And then, boom, red misses, guys. That, I mean... The motherfuckers guys are there, and then kaboom! Yeah, look at how cinematic this is. Kidnaps Dave at his dad's uh, funeral. And then Mindy shows up at the top of the car and says, Game on, motherfuckers. Yeah, Mindy's awesome. It's... I like the movie version better. It's like, Game on, cocksuckers. Motherfucker sounds weird. Yeah, the cussing here is excessive, the violence is excessive, and I don't care. This comic is fucking just nasty fun. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Look at that. Oh, yeah. The... Yeah. This damn, oh my god, so good, so good. Except for some of the controversial scenes, but this is, this is gonna be epic. Times Square here, Red Mist planting some bombs. And then here they are, taking over Times Square. Some of my favorite parts here were some of oh, That's why we ask our friends along. Oh no. Avengers fucking assemble, asshole. Oh, badass. So this comic is not for everyone. I can't talk about the dark stuff because, yeah. But this comic is just epic. Goes up. It goes from super light, and then super edge lord, and then light. The, you know, there's some good character stuff, and then epic, 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 epicness right here. Some violence. Oh yeah, this is uh, what the where Mindy chops off 
Mother Russia's head. Oh my god. Ooh. Why did I show that page? It said this comic is nasty. Here's Red Mist being a pussy again. Deep trying to beat the crap out of him. And then boom. Then he almost kills Red Mist. Um, Chris. It's a good comic, man. Not for everyone, as I said, but it really resonated with me because of how well the characters are established and then you see them get torn down and you feel it you know so as i said kind of like angel it's dark in places but it can be light and some that's the end of book three the end of book three is mindy surrendering herself for the good of her superhero community it's the end of book three now let's move on to book four now let's move on to volume 4, the finale, Kick-Ass 3. This one, I think this is where Mark Miller really got to flex his muscles. Mostly in the character stuff. I really love how he did everyone here. He wrote everyone like they are actually human beings. I love the first three volumes, don't get me wrong, but everyone here is written like a human being. Especially Dave, they've really got a lot of character growth because the um, last two volumes, Hit Girl and uh, Kick Ass, really has more Mindy on it. If that makes sense. He really focused on Mindy on that. Also, because you know, this started because of uh, I would just want to write Hit Girl and Big Daddy. So I was like, you know what? I'll add Dave here for the uh, drama. And that was effective. I think he really gave Dave a backseat. On my Kegasu, but not really. Just a little bit. This one really focuses on Dave, how he lives as a superhero, and then there's this guy Juicer. And his first few issues is like, hey man, you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chill here at Hit Girl's place. Look at this. Look at the TV. Look at those. Uh, look at the view. Also look at the Hit Girl mobile. Just yeah, I hate Juicer. And also, they finally found love in this. Finally. Who is not a Bitka. Let's just use that. In the name of uh, Valerie? I'm looking for the name. Um, Valerie, yeah. Valerie. Make sure. Also, the repercussions of uh, Chris's uh, actions. You see... His mom really getting a lot of like bashing in the streets by other citizens here because you know this woman here experienced lost that because her son got killed by uh, red mist which is just disturbing look at that also this is reminds of civil war yeah just pissed I love the character stuff in this um, Chris's mom, everybody just gets a lot of more character stuff in this and just makes me so happy. That's the reason why I love this volume. So there's this, uh, their planning thing, a thing here. And then, you know, sort of like Batman Year One, which I have not read because I am a Batman fan. Just kidding. Yeah. This is Chris getting killed by uh, Colonel Stars is a. Uh, Colonel Stars' his, um, brother, like, oh, this is a nasty stuff here. Oh, trying to suffocate him. His mom was going to the hospital because he, she, she was planning on killing Chris. But she saw Colonel Stars' uh, brother trying to kill him, so she was like, oh my god, boom. Now, this is a, it's a darker stuff. But the darkness was just, I think, a compliment, not a comp but an addition to the character stuff. Because Mark Miller really knows how to write character development, which is shocking. Because most people will say the criticism for Mark Miller is just he just wants to do widescreen stuff, you know, edge lord stuff. But this is where he shines with the character stuff, and I love it. He really knew. Oh, we're not showing that scene. We really showed that. Uh, 
Mark Miller really showed those haters that I can do character stuff too, you know? <laughs> I love his character stuff work in this. It really paid off. The payoff in here was freaking good. Oh, look at that. Juicers, uh, the charging effect reminded me of something out of uh, Spider Man, you know, the Electro and stuff. We're not showing the six here. Oh, yeah, well, I said, I, I just said that we're not showing. Yeah, the character stuff I just love here. I just the uh, enforcers, dudes. I don't know what they're called. Um, I forgot what they're called, but yeah. Oh, yeah, we're not showing. Oh, yeah, we're not showing those. There's some, uh, as I said, very graphic stuff here too, but it's just people, finally. Mark Miller just writes good character stuff, as I said. It's, oh, yeah, look at that. Also, this is uh, Rocco Genovese trying to kill every single superhero there is in this world. Good old flashback, Big Daddy. It's comic, as I said, character stuff galore. A lot of people doubted Mark Miller's character, character work. Yeah, <laughs> you are in for a treat with this one. He really knows what to do. He really knows what to write. He, he nailed this. He nailed this volume. I. That's what I said. Oh yeah, this is our Christmas redemption. Is by rescuing Hit Girl. I love this. I love this comic. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a good comic, man. The ending is just. I'm not gonna turn the last wish, but. So just you read this like you know right now oh yeah before i end this video i'll show you the binding and the build of this book so the build of this book is its own binding but it's really reinforced with a lot of glue because the pages are a bit heavier because as i said these are very thin like very like thin trades Hard covers really have thicker paper. Some of the trades have thick matte paper too, semi matte paper. So, Blessings told me that they were just gonna sew this. I was like, okay, but the spine doesn't flex all that much. So, when you see like double page spreads, I'll show you a good uh, example with the uh, Eisenhower biting. Just show this page. Here's a bit of gutter loss. That's mostly the also I'm it's a double edged sword, like that sucks because you know I can't see the artwork, but when you look down here there's this white stuff. There's some glue in that, there's some glue in that, but you know the white stuff when I was taking this apart, the hard covers. They are they are, you know, just the white pages that you know, when you put I don't know what they're called, but they're the white pages. They don't have artwork in them. The artwork is cut off. So, yeah. So, I will end this com um, comic review with a few more words before, you know, as I said, before I end this review. If you want to read this, this original run, I suggest you pick up the... What's it called? The, the reprints of this from Image, which is called Kick-Ass, the Dave Lizuski years. It's from volumes 1 to 4, just like this, but they're not, you know, the Hit Girl volume is not labeled Hit Girl. Just Kick-Ass, Dave Lizuski years, volume 2. I suggest you buy it like that. But if you want your comics, or if you want something like this, you know, bind your comics, get them custom bound, I suggest you contact, visit their Facebook page, uh, Blessings Book Bindery and other services. Printing and other book bindery services. I forgot what they're called really. I'm just going to put the link on the description below. Yeah, if you want their, your comics bound, they do other you know, books too. But their, com their uh, graphic novel binding is just crazy good. This one just cost me fairly cheap. And then, you know, they also not just bind like trade paperbacks and hardcovers. They also use single issues to be bound into 
hardcover. So yeah, that's all for my review. Highly recommend this comic if you like Angel, the show, and dark humor, Mark Miller writing, John Amina Jr. artwork. This is a beautiful comic for me about a group of people who just want to do good even though some of them are not the most what's the right word not the most likable people but they want to do the right thing it's a good book highly recommend very violent not for everyone don't give this to your kids if you have the traits don't give them to your kids read it for yourself if you're 16 and up you're good don't read them when you're 11 like me just Go read this comic, buy it, buy it from your local comic shop or bookstore or whatever. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. And take care, y'all. Bye-bye.